Now, let's quickly shift our attention to the security devices. First, let's talk about firewalls. A firewall is a security device designed to protect your internal network from various threats on the internet or the external network. Firewall achieves this by monitoring and filtering incoming and outgoing packets as follows. Now, before we go deep into this, understand that firewall is a packet filter. It filters packets as they're either coming in or going out of the network. Now, what information does firewall actually look at and filters on? It looks at a combination of source IP and destination IP at layer three. It looks at source port and destination port, whether TCP or UDP at layer four. It stores state information for each packet to look for deviations. This is also known as stateful inspection or stateful firewall. It could potentially do deep packet inspection to identify additional TCP and UDP ports at layer seven, in addition to also identifying the actual application itself. It can also do what's called URL filtering by looking deep into the content of each HTTP request. There are two type of firewalls. One is called legacy firewall or a traditional firewall. We also call that a layer four firewall. And we also have the next generation firewall or NGFW it's also known as application layer firewall or layer seven firewall. Now what's the difference between layer four firewall and layer seven firewall? As the name gives it away, layer four firewall or traditional firewall can only filter up to layer four. For example, if you look at two A, B, C, these three elements here, source and destination IP, source and destination port, and storing the state information, that's your layer four. But if you look at 2D and E, they're more advanced functions. That's the functionality of a next generation firewall. Now, this is not a comprehensive list that I have up here in bullet two, right? There's a lot more to it, but I'm just giving you a very high level overview of what a firewall is but we'll go deep into the legacy firewall and next generation firewall as we move forward here. Now let's quickly look at stateful firewall overview. So let's review this topology. We got an internet connection that's terminating into an internet edge router. That router has a firewall sitting behind it and behind the firewall, we got the switch and that switch has a web server plugged into it. Now we got this legitimate user on the internet his name is Bob, he's connecting to this web server and life is good because our firewall will do what's called a stateful inspection and assuming Bob is only sending, let's say between 10 to 100 connections per second, that's totally allowed because our firewall policy has these limits set and defined within the firewall policy. So that's considered a normal traffic flow. Once again, here we have the TCP connection limits or the total number of TCP connections per second predefined. And the firewall has the ability to keep track of every single flow. This allows the firewall to be able to monitor TCP connections per second. Now let's take this concept to the next level. We still have Bob connected, he's happy. All of a sudden we got this hacker. And now let's look at what's going on with our firewall. Our stateful firewall now has a red flag. It's a DOS attack traffic flow. What's going on now is hacker is sending 10,000 TCP connections per second. So if you guys recall previously, our limit was between 10 to 100. Now the firewall is seeing 10,000 connections per second coming its way from a particular machine, from one particular source going to one particular destination. Now that's a red flag, it's a policy violation. But if he didn't have a firewall, what would end up happening is our legitimate guy, Bob, will actually lose access to the web server because of the denial of service attack. The firewall will be so busy processing hackers 
request that the legitimate users will never be able to connect to that web server. But thanks to the firewall, we can not only detect this malicious behavior, but actually protect against it. We can take an action and kill that traffic. Now let's look at another important concept when we talk about firewalls is security zones. So as you can see in this diagram here, we got internet connection coming into our edge router that's plugged into the firewall. Now, as you can see, the orange highlighted area is considered an outside zone. It's called zone outside. And then we got the firewall connected to the switch port that is connected to a machine that Bob happens to be using. Now the green box at the bottom of our firewall is the zone inside. Okay. So what this is giving us the ability to do is we are literally defining different zones and we are assigning different trust levels to those ports in order to be able to do something with that traffic. And the way we use these zones is through firewall rules. So our rule one could say allow zone inside to initiate traffic on port 80 to zone outside. Okay, so you see this green port here on this firewall, that's rule number one that's configured on this firewall. And then rule two, the default rule on a firewall is to deny all traffic. So in our case, rule two says all other traffic is disallowed, meaning we'll only allow zone inside to talk to zone outside if the traffic was initiated internally from the LAN going to the WAN over port 80. And this is considered a legitimate traffic because it's being initiated from the inside. Now, if the traffic comes in the reverse direction, if somebody out on the internet tries to initiate a TCP connection over port 80 into our LAN, let's say if somebody's trying to connect with Bob over that port, firewall will kill that traffic because we don't have that rule defined. Now let's take our security zones to the next level. So. We still have our zone outside at the top of the screen and we got our zone inside at the bottom of the screen, the green and the red zones. What we have now is the third zone to the right of the firewall and that is the zone DMZ. So this is our demilitarized zone. Here we have a public facing server, a web server that we want internet users to connect with. Let's say if you're amazon.com or google.com or pick your favorite site, that's how they configure it, right? They have these different type of, they actually have a DMZ zone where their web servers sit to serve their customers. And the reason they do that is so when you f d define your firewall rules, the first rule may say, allow zone inside to speak with zone outside over port 80, that's allowed. Rule two might say, allow zone outside access to the DMZ zone over port 80. That's also a desired behavior and it's allowed. But what's not desired is all other traffic is denied. Meaning if somebody on the internet wants to communicate with Bob, that traffic will be denied. Unless Bob wants to talk to the outside world, that's allowed. But the outside zone cannot connect with Bob. However, the internet users can communicate with the web server all day long, no issues, but only on port 80. If somebody tries to change the port because they're trying to be clever and they're trying to break into the DMZ server, they can try all day long but they're not gonna succeed because our firewall will keep killing that session as soon as that traffic hits the firewall and it detects that the port is not 80, but let's say it's 1,020 or 20,001. It will go ahead and drop that traffic. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.